On the breakfast, Nigerian electricity workers commence an indefinite strike over pending labor issues with the transmission company of Nigeria. Talk about this on the breakfast this morning. Also on the breakfast, stakeholders say deliberate investment of youth will be necessary for economic growth and reduction in social crisis in Nigeria. Don't forget, we'll dive into the pages of the National Dailies. We have our headlines on the front page. I'll give you details of one or two of those stories with interesting analysis with a guest analyst in Off the Press. We're back with the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Bobo. Beautiful morning to you. And thanks All for right. joining us. Fantastic. Messi, it's a brand new week. You're smiling. I don't know why you're smiling. <laughs> There's an extra smile. Everybody, what's going on? Oh, I have no idea. Trust <laughs> me. Messi showing her 32 this morning. Um, well, well. Anyway, uh, we didn't plan to wear the same color. It just happened. Coincidentally, I think Mercy has a crystal ball in her room where she doesn't <laughs> see what I'm worried. But Mercy, uh, we have interesting topics today on the program, but we usually start off with our top trending segment. And uh, we're having a chit chat about some of the stories of, of the air before we came on. It seems that uh, today's top trending segment is going to be hot. So let's start with the first one. All right. So, so the first one talks about, uh, you know, ASU and the federal government on UTAS. But... So it was a development. Apparently, ASU and the federal government have been in talks. Now, I woke up to the reports that, you know, the meeting between the federal government and ASU, because it just felt like at some point, uh, just maybe, maybe there will be a compromise and the strike will be called off. And so that was actually the perception. But on the one hand, it felt like, um, you know, ASU and the federal government for once have agreed on something. And it's, you know, the payment system. Mm. So uh, the federal government... It was reported that had agreed with uh, to adopt the uh, University Transparency Accountability Solution, which is a UTES, as a payment platform for lecturers, uh, contrary to what the federal government was standing on for, which is the IPPIS, right? But we also need to understand that on February the 14th, which is a Valentine's Day, I mean, as we back on strike on that particular day, really saddening. I mean, I can just imagine what... what Valentine's Day. <laughs> Valentine's it was Day. A, you know, we talk about 14 yes. February, and we you don't know, even talk about the fact that it was <laughs> Valentine's Day. I still had the guts to go on strike Some, on some people's lectures just wanted to go home and <laughs> stay with their wives. Yeah, so... So ASU actually embarked on that strike. But there were several reasons that ASU embarked on the strike. And so one of it was the fact that, uh, you know, ASU had demanded that salaries and allowances, there be implementation. Because first of all, the government had failed to implement its demand on salary and allowances of lecturers. And so uh, one of the reasons was that. And another would be improved funding for universities, adoption of UTAS as a platform for payment contrary to the IPPIS, right? So uh, it, it felt like as a yesterday or a day before yesterday, maybe one element out of so many reasons why ASWA and Backed on the Strike uh, had actually gotten some nod, like a yes and a plus. But um, you also want to agree with me that if you like, uh, amongst all the issues, you know, it really didn't happen. So uh, the, the meeting with the federal government and ASWA yesterday, we're hoping they'll wake up to the news that, hey, the strike has been called off and students can now return. I'm just wondering what it, it feels like, you know, to be a student and uh, still being a strike and even being or anticipating to, for the strike to be called off. Well, university students have been at home for six months uh, or thereabout prior to, I mean, we're looking at 183 days, 84, 85, uh, due to us to strike. Yes, for the avoidance of anything, students have spent that uh, number of time. Now, what is the strike about? Why have that not been resolved? The disagreements stems from the 2009 agreements between the federal government and ASU over the implementation of the 2000 uh, Pact and Memorandum of Agreement on Welfare, improving uh, funding to universities and uh, the proliferation of universities, continuation of controversial integrated. We mentioned all of that. Uh, well, the federal government has not fulfilled its part of the agreement. It's very obvious, and that's why you have 
um, you know, the strike test going. But for one reason, because we seem not to talk about that reason, Kofi, the reason that the government has actually cited is that uh, the federal government does not have the resources. We're talking about funds now. So lack of funds or resources is the reason. And so going by that, um, it's also been stated that the, the government has been, or ASU has also been, on the other hand, asking for some sort of increment, an increase, you know, from 109% to about 188, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, uh, just to put it at that, because lecturers within the continent are the poorest in Nigeria. I mean, they seem to be underpaid when you juxtapose them with other, you know, contemporaries. But to be very honest, the reason that all of this has been uh, prolonged, you're asking that from 2009, we're begging the federal government to implement an agreement. And so there's like a renegotiation for that particular agreement for 2009. Let's see how we can... Re I mean, we don't have all of the details in front of us. Very sketchy. But um, the, the crux of the matter is that you know, the federal government does not have resources. I mean, there are no funds to pay. So underneath it is the, is the fact that lecturers are asking also for some sort of incre increment or improvements, you know, in salaries or whatever that will be paid to them. And uh, government is saying that we don't have what it takes because it would mean that it would increase the spending of the government on the other hand. And so this is the back and forth. But the implication and the consequences, you cannot. They're very, very glaring. They're in front of us. We can see all of that. It's quite saddening. And it doesn't even, you know, post a good uh, picture or an image for us, especially outside of the country, for those who want to study outside of the country. It feels like, you know, uh, people begin to cast doubt on the, you know, the certificate or degrees that you have. Uh, trying to apply for uh, an education outside of the country, especially if you're going for your master's or your PhD, it becomes a problem. But these are some of the issues right here. And even if, you know, the strike would have been called off today, the big question would be, in 13 years, ASU has actually gone on strike nine times. And so the issue of the strike would always be, you know, a big issue. Would this have actually solved the problem of, you know, the continuous strike? Would this solve the problem entirely that you, 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 you say we wake up and ASU would not go on strike? Because we're talking about some agreement or renegotiation for an agreement on uh, 2009. An agreement that was entered in 2009 has not been implemented. In 2022, I have to say that again. Like, I have to really say 2022. But that's it. But Kofi, what are your thoughts, really? Yeah, I think, Mr. you basically said it all. And uh, we we'll have to keep watching the space to see, you know, what, what transpires when that meeting finally holds um, or the re results of the meeting come out um, or comes out rather. Um, but let, let's watch the space and let, let's see what happens. Uh, uh, we, we have a second, a second um, trending story. This time has to do with uh, the Cairn elections. And of course, it's been a big, a big subject uh, on social media. I'm sure that you are listening or watching this morning have seen one or two things about the Cairn elections online. Uh, Mercy, uh, I, I had a good laugh. Um, some, some days ago when some people on social media were likening George Wajakoya who came a distant third to uh, uh, the uh, Peter B phenomenon on social media in Nigeria and all that. But the latest is that um, having declared uh, the deputy president of Kenya, William Ruto, as a winner of that uh, Kenyan presidential election 2022, we heard from uh, three of uh, the four candidates in that election. Um, who were at the venue of the announcement and uh, made one or two speeches, uh, including William Ruto, you can see George Wajakoya, and then the Reverend on the other one on the right. I saw them holding hands. And, but I didn't see Rilo Odinga, you know, in this, in, this, in this setting. Well, the latest is that uh, yesterday, uh, the opposition leader in Kenya, Rilo Odinga, uh, rejected, officially rejected the results of that August 9 uh, presidential election that conferred victory on his rival Deputy President William Ruto. Now, this is what he said, quote, what we saw yesterday Monday was a travesty and a blatant disregard of the Constitution of Kenya, is what he's saying when he addressed the press conference uh, on, on Tuesday. However, on Monday, the, uh, the head of Kenya's election body declared Ruto the winner. It was a closed fought election. Um, but another thing that we saw yesterday was um, the uh, rejection of the results by not less than four commissioners of the Kenyan electoral body. The rejection of the, of the results by not, not less than four commissioners of the Kenyan electoral body. They raised some concerns about the, uh, the tally 
the way the votes were, were tallied. They also raised some concerns about abstentions or invalid votes, rather. And uh, these are issues that, uh, you know, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission in, in K chairman, that's the INEC of Kenya, we can call that, uh, Chairman Wafula Chebukati would have to address. If we look at the results, Ruto won with almost 7.18 million votes uh, or 50.49% uh, against 6.94 million votes that were allocated to, um, to Raila Odinga. Um, so these, this, is, this is the crux of the matter. Um, we hear the elections in Kenya have a political a history, a political crisis uh, with opposition often challenging the results. So this is nothing new. Uh, but that is what we see that Raila Odinga has come out to say. Uh, I reject these results. And then his case is aided by at least uh, four commissioners of the Kenyan Independent um, Electoral and Boundaries Commission also saying that, I mean, they, there are issues with those, those results in the, ways they, the way they were tallied. Well, um, you know, like that has also been said. Uh, you could also see that uh, Kenyan, some Kenyans have reacted differently and they have attributed the, uh, you know, his winning to um, some kind of alliance with the M7, saying that, hey, uh, we know that the M7 has supported. He was part of the M7, and it's really disheartening. And some of the persons have said that uh, we understand uh, that, you know, this result has come, and uh, uh, it feels like it's a playbook of serial presidential contestant who enjoyed the support of former ARC rival and current Kenyan president Uru Kenyatta and the establishment uh, element in his election. And so it feels like there's a lot that's going on. But some of the concerns that Kenyans have raised, or those who are in Kenya, have raised is the fact that they talked about the law, if you know, the process of the election was conducted uh, in the lights of the law. I mean, if the law had uh, its course. So we're talking about the process now. Was the law respected? Did they do what was supposed to be done? So you're talking about four commissioners, and you're also talking about, you know, a chairman, how many of these commissioners observed all of that. It's, it's, it's quite, um, you know, serious. But the question would be, what can we Nigerians learn from all of this? Is there anything to learn from, uh, you know, the Kenyan presidential elections of 2022 as we are ready for the elections for 2023? What it really, really feels like, I mean, from the voices that we hear, it feels like a lot of people are displeased, are not satisfied with Ruto Williams emerging right there. But we'll cross our fingers and see how all of this pans out. Yes, in, indeed. Um, I mean, you, you've, you've said it all that, um, uh, you know, <laughs> we'll have to look at how this pans out. But um, like in the, in, the, in the introduction background that I gave earlier, um, I, it was said that the you know the rejection of results is not is not new in Kenyan elections. I mean, I remember you know following the you know politics of, of southern and eastern Africa over the years. Um, it's been quite interesting. Interesting. These uh, are countries that have had democracy for for a long time, uh, or for some time. Let's call it that. I think Ruto will be the fifth president in the history of Kenya. Um, they had a, a dictatorship for some time. Uh, in the person of uh, Daniel Arab Moy. Um, Daniel Arab Moy was there. It was hard for people to, to get him out. There were protests and protests and protests. People felt that elections in the time of Daniel Arab Moy were not uh, free and fair. And that time, Moy Kibaki was the, um, the opposition leader in, in Kenya. And people would go on the streets in the 90s, and the military would be released on them. They'll be flogged and everything, chased, tear gas, arrested, and all that. So it was some sort of victory um, for seen as a victory for democracy when uh, Moi Kibaki was able to upstage uh, Daniel Arab Moi to, to become the president. You know, so in, in, in over the years, you've had this rejection of results and, um, uh, you know, protests and everything. It's, it's normal in that part of the, the continent. I remember even when uh, Robert uh, Mugabe was president of uh, Zimbabwe at the time, the opposition would, would routinely, it's almost like a given that they would reject the results, you know, it was almost a given. Um, you look at other countries in that in that part of the continent, the East and the Southern African bloc. But this time, um, Raila Odinga has something going for him, which is that he has uh, 
uh, even the commissioners of the Electoral and Boundaries Commission, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, are saying, see, we have some issues with these results. So let's see how it plays out. I think at the end of the day, the, the courts will be the route to go to. Um, I do not know if Kenyans are going to come out and uh, protest on the streets like they've done in the past. However, it can be seen that the results show that the men are neck and neck. You know, in the Kenyan elections, if you want to, you have to, or you must be declared the winner. You have to have at least um, 50% plus one vote of the total votes cast. 50% plus one vote of the total votes cast. And you must have at least 25% of the votes in a certain number of the counties. I've forgotten what it is. In, in Kenya, it's just like we have in Nigeria. So it's it's the, 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 it's clear that it's a it's a close contest. Now, did, or did did Ruto really get the votes he needed to to have that fifty plus one percent? You know, these are the things that we need to look at. Um, so hopefully, hopefully, this will go the full length of, of the uh, in, uh, the the legal process. You know, there might be a recount like we've seen in America before. I don't know what the law says in Kenya, but we'll see how this plays out. In, in, in Ghana uh, and some other African countries, they've gone all the way to the Supreme Court. And, you know, it's taken a long time, it's painstakingly going through the materials and taking, you know, submissions from the councils of the various uh, political parties to come to uh, an, uh, a decision. And some of these things are, are publicized and televised on national TV and, and national radio. You know, so let's see how it plays out. And I, I asked a question to some persons yesterday, what will you do, how will you respond in the Nigerian elections in 2023 if your candidate does not win? You know, there's a possibility that we have a runoff, possibly we have a different scenario in 2023, and people are boiling. <laughs> so it, it, it's an interesting thing for, for Nigerians to see, and I think the electorate in this country will bore relief from how the Kenyans react and how the Kenyans react. Well, uh, uh, ahead of 2023, uh, 20, uh, we're talking about uh, your state uh, gubernatorial elections or uh, governorship elections. I mean, there's been a lot that's been said, you know, about, you know, that particular elections that will happen. And uh, some people have talked about uh, the emergence of the Labour Party candidate uh, for the elections. Uh, uh, some people have also talked about the assurance of the Accord Party. I mean, it's a lot. So you have uh, the ZLP, the PRP governorship candidate missing in INEX display. Uh, there are several concerns uh, following that elections for 2023. Hmm. It's interesting uh, to see what's going on in your state. Um, it's, 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 it's one of those elections that people are looking out for, of course. INEC has the responsibility and the opportunity to, um, to focus its arsenal, like we call it, um, on the, on the uh, situation in Oyo State. Asna, um, sorry, INEC has the opportunity to focus its arsenal because, of course, it's one election and it's not a general election where the whole country will be taking up INEC's attention. So it'll be interesting to see. People have raised um, uh, concern um, about, about the... The, the conduct of the elections there, the, you know, the release of the, the political parties and all that. We're also having some of the parties and groups there declaring support for politicians. You know, for instance, the Oyo North PDP has declared support for Mark and Day. They've set up a reconciliation committee to address lingering issues, uh, so on and so forth. So this is one of the issues as far as the Oyo State governorship uh, election is concerned. Um, Let's see what happens. You know, these elections that are held in recent times, everybody wants to see how Labour Party will perform. <laughs> I don't know. Each time I mention no. Labour Party, you may see your, your, no. fa your face brightens up. I don't know oh, what's no, going on here. No, come on. Don't, don't even put me in that okay. space. So, to be very honest. Maybe I got it wrong. Yeah, you got it okay, wrong. And right, I, I think right. that you always I, 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 I mean, I, I laugh for, I, I could uh -huh. actually smile at different mm. points. Every, everybody that, wants to see how Labour Party will perform. No, so let's, you know. let's, but, let's, but, even talk, let's even talk about some of the concerns. Because yeah. apart from Labour Party, yeah. I also mm. mentioned the fact that there's a Z. LP party. The I mean, Zenith Labour Party. Yes. Okay, Zenith Labour Party. No, I I mean, I'm, I'm putting the abbreviation out mm, there. Yes. And, and we, I, I don't, I don't know. I hope the Boot Party yeah, has a candidate. Kind of, have you heard of the, the Boot Party? The Accord Party also. The emergence, the presence of the Accord Party, Accord the party ZLP, LP, and all of that. Yeah. Now, yeah. but this is what I, I, I would always think. I mean, my thoughts are usually around the fact that we know that there's several arguments of 
having the thought, I mean, having uh, political parties, certain political parties dominate the space over time. And so we know the parties that have dominated the space. And, and usually people would say, oh, it's like choosing between, uh, you know, the devil and the deep blue sea, something like that, right? So um, we remember that when we, we were in 2022 now, and there's been a lot of strong conversation about the thought force. And, you know, the thought force, the thought force. Just what happened in 2015 was what a lot of persons uh, were anticipating, mm -hmm. right? We anticipated that we'll just have, you know, combination <laughs> of forces that will come together. Yeah, I'll and I'll be like, you know, the, the thought force, right? But, but that hasn't really played out as a lot of persons expected because the thought force would be a combination of different forces who come together. But who says, you know, we can't have a thought force? But my concern is that it feels like we're, you know, the people... The people themselves are never serious about the thought force movement or, you know, the talk of the thought force. Because we always wait for two days before the elections, before are we come out. About now, the, two the, days. The electorate. I'm talking about the electorate plus, you know, those who are the politicians. Politicians themselves okay. who are politicking. Okay. So it's a combination. Mm. I mean, mm. because you have the electorate and then you have the politicians <laughs> come together. Yeah. You know, the politicians yeah. will come together and then put out all of this stuff and then everyone begins to say, hey, there's a thought force. My, my point is, we know what it means to plan. So, so where's the planning? Structure. Where's the plan? Where's are you, are you, are you I, I did not say. Messi doesn't want to use the word structure. <laughs> I'm not even talking about. <laughs> she <structure>. doesn't <laughs> want to go there. This is structure. This is messy. I'm, <laughs> I'm saying, ah. where's the plan now? Right. Okay. So it would be necessary. Well, for instance, in, in Lagos State. State, for instance. No, for for, for instance, in Lagos mm. State, mm. we know that the APC had been had had been dominating, like, like almost from the inception. They have been in power for a very long time. As much as you want to say the word That's democracy. In, in which state, which state are you I'm talking, to? I'm talking about Lagos State now. Okay, Lagos State. I'm talking about Lagos okay. State now. I'm saying that for the word, for every time you say the word democracy, transition to democracy, mm -hmm. you also want to say APC mm -hmm. in Lagos State. Okay. But who says that that cannot change? My point is, if you have to confront all of this, um, uh, you know, dominant forces or powers that be, don't you think that it would be necessary that even at 2019 would have started preparation? That so, those who so, are about so to start your, preparation? Your, 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 don't your, your even problem, try to say. Your problem is, is with I the, don't have a problem. The, 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 um, your issue, let me say, the concern. I don't have an issue. The, the, okay, uh, your case is <laughs> with the, uh, is with the, um, how do you call it again? The, the, some call it mushroom parties. I don't call it mushroom parties. I don't, I didn't say that. But, but, but mushroom is not a bad word, you know. Some people are offended when they hear that. APC, PDP, and the other mushroom parties, they get offended. Mushroom is not a bad word. Mushroom means you started, you know, but late, but you're growing quickly. That's what it means. But, um, you know, some have said, for instance, yesterday, or day before yesterday, uh, political act activist, you know, and I'm happy to see that uh, what I've been saying all along about some of these activists on Twitter, that would, you know, they only, all they need to do is just criticize the government of the day, and everybody's jumping on their backs and hitting them. And I'll be looking at them like, because hmm. I know <laughs> now they are revealing their true colors. Which yeah. is? The likes of uh, uh, um, Mokri. He should wear his stance. And now those who were hailing him, because he, all he needed to do was just criticize uh, Buhari. And I said, ah, you're a liar, you're this, you're that. Because he's taking his stance. Uh, another one, DJ Deanji, has also, also shown his color. You know, and now everybody's, ah, you. But anyway, DJ. Uh, put out a, a, a challenge. It's a ten thousand dollar challenge, and he said, "Oh, anyone who, because you're talking about the third force parties in there, how they can perform during elections, and with all your state as a case study." You know, says so anyone who feels that he feels that Labour Party will come a distant third, you know, Peter Obi will come a distant third in the 2023 general elections, like like George Wajakoya, for instance, who came distant third, not even close third or second. In fact, DG is not even talking about first. He said the Labour Party will come a distant third in the 2023 presidential elections. And he wants to place a bet. Anybody who feels that that, that will not happen he wants to challenge and place a bet of $10,000. So he put out his, his, um, his the information, his uh, receipt. Dele Momodu, Egon Dele Momodu is, is a referee in this matter. I wish I could join them. At least I'll get some commission. So DJ now said he's he's given and then we'll move today ten thousand dollars. He actually spoke to one uh, Labour Party supporter on social media. I think it's an obedient, and said to him, "Let's let's let's bet. I'm telling you that 
you can't lead. And uh, I think last time I checked, nobody has, has, has taken up that bet. I don't know. I spoke to some people who are supporters of, um, of the Labour Party presidential candidate, and some were saying that uh, DG should, should, should not waste that money, should go and donate it to us. You know? And I said, it's, it's, no, I said, okay, if, if you guys bring your, your, your $10,000, to to and you win. These twenty thousand, you can now take twenty thousand and donate to Asu. You know, twenty thousand is more than ten. So why are you complain? You know, but but some people said no, they was not being serious. But we look at it. So 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 the, the third first thing is is really crucial. Some people feel they won't do. No one will make a splash. They will just make no, a no, no no no. But for me, you know, the concern it will be interesting to see how it plays out. But I I don't think mercy that um, the state elections can still be a barometer. Honestly, this is me being honest now and serious right. about it. No, no, no. I but don't think the state elections can be a barometer for how the national elections will play out. Very correct. The dynamics are, are different. No, yeah. no. But however you want to see it, I mean, you can't. Which is very true because I mean, there are different elections, and you can actually tell even um, you, even if you have you know like two states, what will happen in a certain state would might just be different. What will happen in another state, right? So we saw a case of you know. Uh, the Oshun state elections, uh, Bikiti state elections, we, we, we have actually seen uh, the outcome of these elections. But the point here is, if, if there's going to be a thought force, if you're going to challenge the dominant force that has been in power for a long time... You must plan. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. I, Messi, I think Messi, the planning Messi. is very so crucial. Are you, are, you, are, you saying, are you saying Labour Party doesn't have a structure? That's not what, I, I don't know. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that you can't just wake up. To be very honest... It doesn't even make any sense. Because I feel like every other time we wake up the eve of election, 2019 was an election that we had. We had from 2019. And those okay. who were very serious of taking over powers, you know, or taking over power from the current structure. Please, should have please, started please, working please, from please. 2019. Mercy, mercy, no, 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 mercy, but, but, but I'm not joking. I'm not saying anything. But I'm just saying you, that you are sound like working. those who say we don't have structure. No, I'm not talking about structure. I'm saying that if, if there was a plan this by is, any this force... This saying well, any enemies or... <laughs> Pipe well, down, that's so much we can down. take now. We need, we need to move Please. away. I'm saying that you can't take away planning, you know, from the entire you, process. Is this, isn't As this what we plan. was saying that, you know, you can't just wake up and have two million people on income. Now you have to plan ahead. That's not what Erufai is yeah. saying. But that's so much we can take okay. this morning <laughs> on the breakfast. We take a break when we return. It's time for us to go through the front pages of a national daily. Please stay with us.